Hey everyone, welcome to our Harkala YouTube channel. We're happy to have you back. My name is Rachel. And my name is Jessica. We are the Certified Occupational Therapy Assistants with Harkala. And today we are gonna talk about shoe tying. I know you do. <laughs> As occupational therapy assistants, this is a this is actually one of my favorite skills to work on in therapy, that and bike riding. I love this skill because it gives kids a newfound level of confidence to be able to complete a daily activity on their own independently. Yeah, tying shoes is a life skill. And we realize that there are a lot of shoes out there nowadays that don't require you to tie them every time you put them on, but they're still plenty of options out there and tying shoes works on a lot of underlying skills that these kiddos are going to use in a lot of other activities and we'll talk about that a little bit here in a minute. Let's dive into some of the underlying skills that are required for shoe tying. So coordinating both hands together to complete the task. Mm -hmm. And then we have fine motor dexterity, so being able to coordinate both hands together with the fingers in order to tie the shoes. Next is visual motor integration, and that is hand-eye coordination. So coordinating what you're doing with your hands, but making sure your eyes are there as well, and you're seeing everything you're doing, and you're just, you have that coordination. The next one is visual spatial relations. So identifying how the laces move together and how you have to position them in order to tie them successfully. So one lace goes over, one lace goes up, under, things like that. Another one is force modulation, knowing how much force to use when you're manipulating the laces. If you push too hard, it's not gonna work. If you don't push hard enough, it's not gonna work. A big one is sequencing as well. So knowing the sequence of steps in order to successfully tie the shoes. We cross them over, we pull them, we do one bunny loop, we cross it around. Whatever sequence works, that is a sequence that you need to be able to follow. And then there's also attention. So sustaining attention and ignoring other things that might be distracting in your environment in order to complete the full tying shoe task. So if any one of these underlying areas is not working properly, is a challenge for your child, then shoe tying is going to be difficult and it's 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 an area that needs to be addressed. It's not a lost art. We need to continue to work on it. Plus, like we mentioned earlier, being able to tie shoes actually translates to a lot of other activities in the day. And we're gonna talk about those really quick. The first one is tying on an apron. Not only is it backwards, being behind your back, but you can't see, you don't have your use of vision in order to successfully tie. Another one would be being able to tie and manipulate a fishing line. So there's a lot of fishermen out there. Are you fishermen? Yes. Fisher woman? Yes. Yeah, so am I, so is my family. And so that is definitely a life skill. So the skills that you need for tying shoes translates to being able to manipulate fishing line. Another one is gift wrapping, tying bows, all of the challenges that come with wrapping gifts and making beautiful bows, tying the, the ribbon on there. Mm -hmm. Lots of tying skills required. Uh, tying a tie. So yeah. for anyone mm -hmm. out there who is dressing up nice in a suit or button down shirt and they want to put a tie on and they don't have a clip on tie, they have to know how to tie a tie. How about tying a jacket around your waist? You have to do just that first step, tie it on, sequence it, make sure it doesn't fall off. And then, you know, tying knots in things. We already talked about the bows and ribbons. You have to tie knots on those, tie knots in the fishing line. What else do you tie knots on? Um, a rope when you're building a rope swing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That happens often. I'm sure there's a lot of examples that we're not thinking of, but the skills for tying shoes are the skills that we need for a lot of other things. Another one would be putting your hair in a ponytail, tying a ribbon in your bow in your hair. Braiding your hair. Yes. 
even though we're not technically working on tying a shoe, we're still working on those underlying skills of sequencing and moving the pieces around each other and up and down and spatial relations. Like there's so much that goes into this skill. Can you tell that I'm passionate about it? Like I love teaching kids how to tie their shoes. All right, well, let's dive into our, was it five? Yep. Our five strategies, activities, tips to help tie shoes. The first activity we're gonna recommend is to practice tying knots for fun. Make it into a game. One of our favorite games is called Not So Fast, K-N-O-T so fast. Unfortunately, we did have a hard time finding the game in stock anywhere online. I was really bummed. Um, it's a game that we used to play in the clinic all the time to work on these underlying skills. So what we're going to do is DIY our own not so fast game to work on copying a knot with your own rope or whatever, whatever lacing tool you're going to use. Yeah, you can use string, yarn, mm -hmm. shoelaces, whatever you want. So all you need is two pieces of string or two shoelaces that are different colors. And to set it up, you're going to want to create a variety of different knots and take pictures of them. Then you're going to have those pictures available for your child to look at. And they have to try to recreate that same knot with their two colored strings or two colored shoelaces. Yes, so great for those spatial relations, helping them identify which rope is underneath, how they have to maneuver it in order to lock it in and tie it. An easy way to modify this would be to not pull the ropes as tight as they can go. Leave space between, especially when you're taking those pictures, so that way they can see which rope is going where and when and how. The next one is cat's cradle. This was one of my favorite activities to do in like middle school and high school on the bus mm -hmm. for trips or for sporting events. My friends and I would have string or yarn and we would just do cat's cradle for the entire bus ride. So it's pretty simple. You just need a piece of string and there's several different YouTube videos out there that teach you how to start, set up and complete different cat's cradle sequences. So we'll link a couple of our favorites in the description below for you to follow. Number three is to work on stringing and lacing beads. This works on the bilateral coordination, the manual dexterity, as well as the visual motor integration. And stringing beads is a great simple activity to do, but you can also grade it up or modify it to make it more challenging by putting smaller beads, having them copy a picture, make those like lizards, those beaded lizards, you know, following My those. My son is nine and he loves making so those. so fun. Yes. I love that. Yes. Yeah, so any beading activity is going to be really helpful to work on those underlying skills. You can also try this activity with vision occluded. So have your child wear a blindfold or put some type of barrier in between their, their vision and where they're stringing the beads and have them do it without being able to see what they're doing. This really works on that fine motor and dexterity component and just using their sense of touch to know what's going on, which will then translate to being able to tie their shoes even easier. And then you can also change up the size of the beads. Larger beads are gonna be a little bit easier while smaller beads are gonna be a little bit more challenging. Number four is to add pipe cleaners to a DIY cardboard shoe. Now the great thing about pipe cleaners is they hold their shape so you can bend them the way that they need to be bent and slowly work on those underlying skills. So instead of holding a floppy shoelace that's falling over and it's difficult to manipulate, you can help the child by move the, move the pipe cleaner in the position that it needs to be in, and then you can show them what their other hand needs to be doing. So maybe they struggle with that bilateral coordination to be able to hold the loop with one hand and swoop the, the pipe cleaner or swoop the lace with the other hand. That way it stays and you can work on that one hand that they need to be working on. That was my specific example for pipe cleaners. I think it's great. <laughs> I think it's perfect. In addition, you can also use two different colored pipe cleaners so that way they can visually see the difference between one side of the shoe and the other side. And that way they have a lace A and a lace B, a lace gold and a lace green. And that way they can see the difference in how one lace needs to move in comparison to the other. I think that's an old, ultimately a great strategy on shoes, shoes yeah. you know, is to have different colored laces if your child will let you put different colored laces on their shoes. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> never know. The last thing we're going to say about this is practice really does 
make the biggest difference. The more your child practices tying their shoes, practices these activities we're giving you to work on those underlying skills, the better at it they will get. Mm -hmm. We're gonna share a couple of last fun activities that you can practice making shoe tying more fun, more engaging. The first one would be to make it fun. You can turn on some music so that way they have some good jams to listen to while they're practicing. You can make it into a competition, a friendly competition. You can make it into a video. You can take their video, you can put it all together and say, this is the story of how Johnny ties his shoes. crazy I mean well the video strategy is actually great if you're yes. in the clinic as well because you can take a video of the child tying their shoes in the clinic and send it to their parents so they also have the video of them being successful mm -hmm. and they can watch that at home as well yeah. Another thing you can do is to just break it down. Make sure you're teaching the steps of shoe tying one step at a time. So if the first step of shoe tying is to cross them over, make sure your child knows that step and they get perfect at that step before you move on to the next step. So you're gonna be helping them as they progress through each step of shoe tying as they get better at each step. Make sure their body positioning is good while they're tying their shoes. A lot of kids have tightness in their muscles and sitting in a good position to tie their shoes can actually be really challenging for them. So maybe take the shoe off, maybe have them sit on a stool so that way their body is in a little bit better alignment. Just make sure that you are focusing on their body position and you're taking that into account when they're working on this. And then one more thing is to really just work on those in-hand manipulation skills, that dexterity component during play. So one of our favorite activities is called squirreling. And this is where you're gonna have several small objects like coins or beans. And your child is gonna use their thumb and their index finger to pick up the small object and squirrel it into their palm and then get another one and squirrel it into their palm. And then they're also going to do the opposite where they take one object from their palm and use it, they're using their thumb and index finger to take it out of their palm and put it on the floor or in a container. So squirreling and de-squirreling, I guess you would call it. One of our favorite in-hand manipulation activities that really works on that dexterity that will then, then translate to tying shoes. Yeah. Okay, lots of ideas here. Hopefully it wasn't overwhelming. Hopefully you can take one thing from this video and apply it either to your child or to your clients if you're a therapist or maybe even if you're a teacher watching this video teaching your kiddos how to tie their shoes. Hopefully it was helpful. If you liked it, make sure you let us know in the comments what you liked about it, like this video, and subscribe. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you follow us on Instagram or Facebook, wherever you like to hang out. We are at Harkla underscore family, as well as at All Things Sensory Podcast. And make sure you go give our podcast a listen as well. It's All Things Sensory Podcast. Thanks for being here, and we will see you next week. Isn't it sad that nowadays most kids on the school buses are like watching TikTok videos instead of playing Cat's Cradle? I know.